And this process really helps them go through all of those pieces well. Um, in order to be able to write, there's really two ways of doing that. One I call writing over, and one I call writing in. Um, and it's really important to not, um, really, it's really important to understand the difference in when to use each. So writing over would be like, I'm standing behind a mirror or a window. You write on the window, and then I move, and the writing stays there. This is what you see in a lot of online programs. Right? And then writing in would be you scribbling on my face, and then I move, and it stays with me. Writing in is way more important, because if you write over a PDF document and you scroll, you've lost it all. Right? But writing over is really important if you want to write over a video, because the video doesn't have a pen tool in it for you to write in. So I want to demo two on the map platform. One is called OmniDazzle, and the other is called Formulate Pro that I like a lot. Links to all these are available. OmniDazzle is awesome because with a couple buttons, oops, there it is. Is it loaded? It's right here. Okay. So it writes right over Keynote too because Keynote doesn't have a pen tool like PowerPoint does. So a couple buttons. I got my pen tool up right now. I can write. I can switch the colors with some keystrokes. And I can write. This is great. Okay. The only thing now is, and if I want to erase it, all I have to do is shake this, okay, and it'll go away. Um, but I'll go to the next slide. See, it stays there, right? So that's called writing over. Um, and I, you can, you know, that's great for writing over a video. That's really the only time that I use it. Now, writing in is really useful because writing in allows you to write over the things the kids are holding in their hand. So if you give kids a worksheet and you solve that worksheet, it, if you solve the problems on PowerPoint and they're holding a worksheet, extraneous cognitive load goes up because what you have is different than what they have. These are really subtle things, but they can make a big difference, right? So what, I wanna, what I'll do is then just take a worksheet. We'll take that template that I had. Right, here's that lecture template. Drag it into Formulate Pro, which is right there. It opens it up. Okay. I zoom in, it's a vector image. I zoom in so I don't lose any quality there. And now I have my simple pen tool. And I can do my thing. I can scroll down and it stays there. I can change colors if I want. So this is different than the pen tool built into Adobe or in PDF Pen. That's meant for signatures. So if you use that, what's going to happen is you're going to write, and then a text box is going to appear around that. And it's going to annoy you, and it's going to annoy your students. So this is made for this right here. I also, you can use the smart software or the stuff that comes with Active Inspire, but that's so, for me, that's so busy. It's got all kinds of other stuff. I want something that is just like my pen tool. Here I am. There, there you go. You know, how much is Formulate Pro? Free. You can download it off my site right now. Uniboard's pretty good too if you go to getuniboard.com. Uniboard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a couple more tools than that, but it's still very clean. Okay, cool. And a big red button to record. James, can you write that down so I forget? All right, thanks. All right. Um, okay, so those are the two. These are Mac-based ones, um, but I'll, there's equal great stuff on the PC level, and we'll talk about that right now. Um, so again, I, those are the two different ways of writing, and it's important to understand when you'd use both. I really only use in. Um, screencasting. There's really three types of screencasting software. One is simple kind without editing, so like Jing. built in doesn't have an editing environment. However, YouTube has editing tools. So if you put that thing in Jing and you upload it to YouTube, you can then edit it and do all the cool stuff James showed earlier. Editing it. You know, the exact same kind of editing you'd be able to do in something like ScreenFlow. Two, built in with editing, and three, online. So we're talking things here like Screen R and Screencast O Matic, things that are built in online. So those are the three ways. And I was going to do a demo, but I'm not going to do a demo of the screencasting stuff right now because we can work at that in the lab, in the workshop time together. But I do want to talk about um, some that I really like. If you have a Mac, 
and you have QuickTime X, you have screencasting built in already, unlimited time. You don't have to get anything else. It has built in screencasting. You go to new screen recording, done. And it's got an upload to YouTube button. So you're good if you have that. Jing is really, really, really awesome though because it's so quick and it's got a lot of cool things built in and it's just really fun. I use Jing a lot when students are making screencasts because they love to play with the sun and all kinds of stuff. Um, ScreenFlow is what I was going to demo. I think if you have Jing, there's two, two accounts. There's free Jing and Jing Pro. Jing Pro is like 16 bucks a year or something like that. Um, Jing Pro has the YouTube button. Jing, regular Jing doesn't. Regular Jing uploads to a site called screencast.com. Which, again, I think, I think having that one button YouTube is really, really important. Um, and then for the online software, I'm going to talk about my recommendations. I was going to demo Screencast-O-Matic, and this is the one that I really recommend. And I'll talk about why in a sec. Okay, so these are the different types of screencasting options. So on the Mac platform, I would say if you just want to do this tonight, I would say take your bamboo for the hardware piece. Throw that bamboo into a couple different places. I didn't talk about Jarnall, but Jarnall is a really, really good open source PDF annotator. Um, or you can throw it into Formulate Pro. These are the two in. I would say don't even worry about over. OmniDazzle is free, though. I use Jarnall for screencasts that I do at home, and I use Formulate Pro for things I do in class. You saw how easy it was for me to pull that into Formulate Pro. Okay, that's why I do it in class. So if I'm walking around solving a problem. Jarnall has some more cool color and pen tools that are really easy to access. So I use that one for my online screencasts. But it's a little bit funkier, so I don't want to walk around the class with this funky thing up there that I need to have more control over. So Formulate Pro is really stable, less options, so I use it in class. Less stable, a lot of options, so I use that at home. Okay? Then I would, you know, you can use one of these, I would use one of these two things here for my screencast software because I want the editing environment, ScreenFlow and Camtasia Mac, although I said ScreenFlow is really where it's at, I think, right now. Um, or QuickTime. And that's what it looks like if you just scroll down, you can do new screen recording there at the top. Throw, it, throw that directly into YouTube, use my Google Form to track, and use a Google site to publish it all on if I don't have my own website. That's what I'd recommend. On the PC platform, start with the bamboo. Zornal is the equivalent of Jarnal in the, in the PC world. It's another open source thing. It works really well um, and allows, it's meant for writing over PDFs, not signatures. It's meant for writing over PDFs. Um, and PowerPoint in the PC has a great pen tool. If you hover over the bottom left of a PowerPoint slide, you get a pen. And the reason I don't say this with the, PC, the, the Mac people is this pen in the Mac environment doesn't stay with the slides and you can't save it with the slides. Whereas in the PC environment, it's built in and it's, you can save the slides with that annotation. So you really got more flexibility with PowerPoint on the PC end. Um, I throw that, I use Camtasia Studio. You know, it is around 300 bucks though. So it's a really expensive piece of software. Throw it into YouTube and use my Google Form and my Google site. If I'm using a purely online platform, what if I want to use my bamboo and use only online tools? Okay, what would I do then? Use my bamboo, I'd use a website called Crocodoc, I just found recently. Crocodoc is really, really cool, um, and it allows you to annotate PDFs online really well. So it does everything that Formulate Pro and Jarnall do, but it's online. And it's really good, it's got some good pen colors to choose from, it's not chunky. It's really nice. I actually might use Crocodoc for everything now. Actually, coming up, um, I'd use Screencast-O-Matic instead of any other one online. I'd use Screencast-O-Matic because there's no time limit, easy upload to YouTube, and there's a pro version for like five bucks a year that has editing and HD embedding. So it's a really, really good option, and it's free. Um, throw that directly into YouTube, Google Docs, and my Google site. That's what I do. And almost done here, guys. On the iPad platform, you, a month, two months ago, this wasn't available. So if I wanted to just use my iPad, how would that look? I take my iPad, and I can skip the writing piece because now the writing and screencasting are mushed together on the iPad. Okay, And there's three programs that you can do that with. Replay Note, Show Me, and Yesterday 
screen chomp was just released by TechSmith. Um, but I'm going to say, oh, and then you don't want to use your finger. I'd use the bamboo stylus that just came out by Wacom. That's the best way to go. Less pen delay. And out of all these three, replay note. Because replay note's the only one that has one button upload to YouTube, and it also has the ability to write over PDFs. You can import a PDF through iTunes with replay note. And I'd use Google Docs and Google Sites again. See, I, I skipped this step. Now, I struggle, I struggle with this, though, right now. And I struggle with it because there is a pen delay. And I struggle with it because I don't see the cursor. Um, and I wouldn't use this to present in class also. So I'd use this to present in class, and I'd use that one at home. So there's a little bit of a difference there. But it's a really, really good solution. Um, Show Me is, is building a really, really nice community right now. Everything goes to the Show Me website right now. So I really like this ability to go out to YouTube. Any questions on the iPad end? OK, so for me, I want to, I want to use this, though. But I don't want to use it for my screencasting. So here's how I'm going to use it this year. I haven't, I haven't done this yet, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build in an on-the-go Q&A system with my kids. So what I'm going to do is say, text me or email me a question, any question you have. Okay. And Yes, I give my kids my cell phone number. Sorry. So text me, email me a question you got. I get a question. They're like, I don't get this problem. I got my iPad on me. So I sit down in my car. I immediately do it on replay note real quick, but YouTube. And then the kids then have access to the channel where all those go. So I'll just they'll know to check the channel 15 minutes after they text me the question. And the answer should be there. Rather than me emailing them back and forth, we're going to build in this community where all their answers are cataloged in one space. So it's on the go Q&A. I haven't done it yet, so I always have these ideas at the beginning of the year that fail. Um, so the way, it, the way I just have it set up is simple. And I wanted to embed the channel into my website, but I wasn't able to figure that out. I guess you can't do you can't iframe a, a YouTube site right into your. I tried, yeah, I tried to embed a whole channel, but so Q and A buttons right here. Step one: text or email me a question. Step two: click here for the video solution. So I'll get a text. I'll solve it. They'll click here. It'll take them to the class YouTube channel, where the, where not only all our lectures for the year will be cataloged, but also the response they saw. And I, I would say your question, Samantha's question at this time. That's the way I title it. Yeah. What, are you, what are your thoughts on the, what's coming up with the uh, AirPlay um, being able to instantly capture like, on the iPad, being able to instantly project what's going on on the iPad? Um, how would you work in like the screencasting thing? So like iOS 5 is coming up, and you'll be able to instantly push your whole screen on the iPad up to your through an Apple TV to my projector. My OK, so that's like what Doceri kind of does, yeah. right? So. My whole thing is efficiency. So what I've noticed with those areas is a delay, pen delay. I've also noticed that I, when I put my finger, when I hover above the iPad, I don't see the cursor moving. So for me, that's big. Because if I'm recording a screencast and I want some picture in picture, I want to be looking there. So what I mean is I want to be able to see the cursor when I'm looking at the camera. I don't want to have to go down and know where I'm at and come back up. So those are just little subtle things that when you do it every day can kind of be a drag. So I'm excited about this on the go Q&A thing because I think that it might be a cool way to interact with kids maximizing their cognitive architecture, right, like we were talking about, rather than me emailing them back a question. Also, it builds a community of people who will see their responses. Well, and heck, how nice is it if you get a question and you can say, check the channel. Yeah. You don't have to keep answering the question. It's already cataloged. Yeah. And the cool thing is built it because it's built into the website, the, that's what they know to do then. They'll go there once. What I wanted to do was have the channel embedded right here. So I tried to do an iframe where I put the YouTube channel in the website itself, but I wasn't able to figure out how to do that. So if anyone knows how to do that, yeah, so, so, um, so I'm almost done here, and then I'll let you guys go. Sorry. So I have one more question about yeah. that. It's in terms of organization of those. Yeah. Because you could picture that over the course of the year, you're going to have hundreds, maybe, of responses to students. So are you going to tag those with the content that's on them then so that they're easy to find? Or how are you going to make it so it's really, like if you just put something, Samantha's question, if I go in, I'm not going to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, I haven't thought about that. Right now, I've thought about that student who just asked me the question, getting their response in 15 minutes. And I have yet, have yet to put thought into what happens after that with that response. So I'd love to chat with you about ways of doing that.
And this, so this is, I'm so new with the iPad thing, so I'm just trying to find out a way to use it because I feel guilty. Like, I feel like I should use these programs that just came out because they, they overlap so much with what I'm into, but I just, I can't let go of this way of doing it yet. I'm not ready to. Um, and I was thinking, like, I know a lot of you guys are, are going one-to-one. -one. If you have a one-to-one -one iPad program, I think it'd be really cool if kids, you know, were working in a group and then really quickly using Replay Note, you know, made a little quick presentation, sent it, popped up there on the channel, and you as a class watch that together. So it's a cool way of reporting out as a group, too. Because the annotation and screencasting is so accessible, it's like right there. There's no learning curve. A kid could use this immediately without any instruction. So I thought that would be a cool way of using it as well. Um, so if I were to pick anything, though, if it were my choice, no cost, what would I do if I had a Mac? I'd use this, not the bamboo. So 250. 250 bucks on the drain right there. Um, I'd use Jarnall more than anything because of all the pen colors. A little bit of a learning curve. If my video was greater than five minutes, I'd use ScreenFlow. If my video was less than five minutes, I'd use Jing. That's what I'd do. Um, I'd send it to YouTube. I'd put it, I'd use Google Docs to make a form, and I'd put it on a Google site. Um, I'm not using Google Site. I'm using something called Rapid Weaver to build my website on the Mac, but you could use whatever you want. Um, if I had a PC, I would use this as well. I would use Zornal. Greater than five minutes, I'd use Camtasia Studio. Less than five minutes, I'd use Jing. And then everything else is the same. So really, the difference lies in the screencasting and the annotation piece. But that's what I would do if I had, no, if I had an unlimited amount of money. And there's some all-in-one options. So what I mean with all-in-one is everything's built in. So there's a website called sketchcast.com. Sketchcast has everything built in other than your thing. So you can plug your tablet in, go to sketchcast.com. It's going to record. It's going to give you a place to do your writing. It's going to give you annotation tools. It's going to publish it. And you can get the embed code, and you're good to go. It's limited, though. You can't write over PDFs. There's a lot of stuff like that you can't do. But if you need to do a quick thing for a third grade class talking about how to, like, Isolate X, really great for that. So it's basically like replay note online, though. Um, and then on my website, I built in a couple things that I'll show you at the end um, that I'm trying to like manipulate some of the tools online to make it online um, all in one place for you. And here are the ones on the iPad. So these are places where you can mush all those steps together that I talked about. Um, in terms of cost options, and these slides can be found on my website and also the Google site for this um, YouTube studio. This is the low cost option and the high cost option on a PC. So 69 bucks to around 280 bucks. There is a teacher version that's cheaper for Camtasia Studio, so that's why it's not that high. It's like 190 something. Um, and on the Mac, the low cost option, those are the things that you could use, and that's the high cost option. So, sorry I went through that real fast. You guys can access those slides when we talk about it. That's my classroom. Um, that's where I do mainly my recording. I made that little recording studio out of cardboard and egg crate. It's kind of ridiculous looking, but it works really well. So, it's just an example of how this stuff can be done for really cheap. Um, so, does anyone have any questions? I know it was a lot, it was a mouthful. Go through. Okay, why don't I show you this little online feature? I'll show you what I'm trying to do with it so you can get an idea. Um, and I really think if any of you guys are like looking for a business to start or something, I think that this is a really, there is no real good all in one space to do this online. There isn't anything like Replay Note or something online. And I think the reason there's a good, I mean, th this is real time writing where the iPad isn't. So I think there's something's waiting for someone to do it. And here's, I'm trying to do it a little bit in kind of a poor man sort of way. So if you go to Tools, All-in-One, and you go down here to Labs, and you click on Blank Canvas Recording, and you guys can use this. I mean, it works well. Um, you can click here, Record. And when you click Record, all it's going to do is launch the Screencast-O-Matic Recorder. Okay? And then down here, here's a place to write. All right? So you would click Record going to take you to Screencast-O-Matic. You're going to allow the recorder to launch. Okay, it's going to give you that. 
there's the frame. And then what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go back to, where was I? Was it over here? Here's my blank canvas. So I'm going to go back to my blank canvas, and then I'm going to drag that recorder over the blank canvas that I have down here. And then what I have built in is just like a pen tool thing where you can then do your recording. So it's built into the website. So it's all in one right there. I mean, it's kind of, I just had an extra five hours on my hands <laughs> one day. And then um, I got the same thing if you, <laughs> if you want to do a PDF recording. So you're going to go here. You can click record. It's going to launch a Screencast-O-Matic recorder. And then Crocodoc is built into the website. So you can upload a PDF right to the website and then click record and do it. So all the tools can be built in for you if you wanted to try it. Just an example of, of ways of bringing this all together. Okay. All right, well, I'm excited to work with you guys later on. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.